official. It is indeed official. Happy Halloween. Yeah, it's October 31st, 2022. It's good to be with you here and good to see your faces on the screen. We decided not to get dressed up. We're just going to eat a bunch of candy. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like a party. <laughs> never was into the Halloween scene too much, no, were we? We're never into the Halloween site. However, I do remember one time we dressed Summer up in a little duck and a little, or Joshua. I don't remember. It was Summer. Anyways, and they would walk in the little, you know, bo bottom was little tail swaying was wagging around. around it was pretty cute it was awesome and then there was the monster the little like sully monster sully. not like a real scary monster yeah but, like, from monsters incorporated that was pretty fun year too yeah. anyway we did we did we did do some trick-or-treating in our life and we did allow trick-or-treating in our uh little world here in the gorman household but we did keep it very like they dressed up Nothing like spooky. princesses or angels or you know dinosaurs or we're digressing though i just wanted to say happy halloween and eat a lot of candy well i think it's i think it's relevant though it is relevant yeah anyhow you want to get started on the lesson i do okay all right Kick let's us do off. It. so tonight is all about cultivating intimacy in times that are difficult and we wanted to revisit we we've talked uh similarly on this lesson a couple years ago but i think that with the life and and some of the experiences we've had we wanted to revisit it and we wanted to revisit it because boy oh boy life has transitions and those transitions can certainly test a relationship and we've we've talked with a lot of couples lately who seem to be navigating what i would say a lot of life transitions and so we want to revisit how to stay intimate and that is inside the bedroom and outside the bedroom whoop, whoop. during difficult times <laughs> so greg you want to take it away anything you want to say no I'll, I'll be happy to so you know just to jump right straight in we'll try to get through this uh as efficiently as possible this evening but to 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 come out of the gates the very first thing we're going to talk about is just make it a practice daily to express hope together you know when oh, so times are are tense or when they're difficult and there can be a million different reasons why times might be tense or that you might you might be navigating difficulty. Sometimes it's, you know, uh, uh, a tension between the two of you. Sometimes it's financial pressure. We hear that one a lot. Sometimes there are things with the kids. We hear that one a lot yeah. as well. Uh, sometimes it's just job transition. Sometimes it's differences in schedules. Sometimes it could be something like uh, a, a, a life change like honestly last couple of years you menopause been, she's been menopausal for god's sakes and so <laughs> i laugh about it now i'm actually on the opposite side of it thankfully you but. you you did that kind of like pregnancy you handled it like a champ it was pretty intense for you know a little while but then you know you really did pretty well but but you know it was real it's it's legitimate and i know that i've had a couple of just life seasons you know where he's also made it through menopause i <laughs> I think you could call it that. Yes. And a, a couple of times couple I started times. real early in life you and did. then it just anyway. Uh, but the point is, is that we all know that life throws us some curveballs and all of us have the opportunity to deal with some difficult seasons, whatever they might be. And I think, again, just leading out of the gates, this first point that mm. that that to express hope. Yeah. Um, one of the things that you've done really well. Uh, for me, when uh, usually, usually I get sideways when there are either financial or work type pressures, mm -hmm. career type pressures more so. Um, the kids can do it too. I tend to get sideways with relationships. If the kids are not doing well, I carry mm -hmm. that weight and it really carries into our relationship and bleeds over. Yeah. And the, and the other thing for me is when it's really like when work becomes so intense that there's no time for me to catch my breath and kind of figure out who I am again, right? Like really just running for the next thing to the next to the next to the next and just checking all the boxes. Not We can do it. We've got a fair amount of stamina, although it is slipping at this stage of my life. But, um, but there comes a place where I think we all have a breaking point. It's just like, hold the flipping show. I got to, I got to chill for a minute, you know? And if there's, there's been times where that wasn't possible 
And we had to keep driving through for a few more weeks, you know, before we could catch our breath. And so we've learned to manage against those time periods and manage for uh, planning for times to take a breath. And so we've, we've done that better. But during those times where it's been super intense, one of the things that you've done well for me in speaking hope and speaking life instead of death, which, by the way, is an ancillary point. It's so tempting when the crap hits the fan, if you will, and things are really intense and it's difficult and we feel the pressures of life wherever they're coming from to rehearse all of the negative yeah. things that are going on all of the time, to speak into those, to literally speak death over our life and over our situation and impossibilities. And so the very first point really is it's, it's speak hope and be intentional about speaking in hope. Now I've started to say it, this will be third time's a charm. What, <laughs> what you, I've done well what for you've you. done well. It always takes me a minute. I'm, I'm to get just it up. baited yeah. of what I've done well. You, you have frequently uh, uh, said to me, babe, it's not, it's not as big as what it feels like it is right now. Mm. Even when I've lost my cool on you mm. and flipped out on you or something <laughs> like that, you know, um, even in those moments uh, when she had every right to roast me if she wanted to, uh, and she's done that a time or two too, but for, <laughs> for the most part, what she does well, she comes in and she says, it's not, it's not as bad. It's not as big. It's not as real. Mm. as what it feels like in this particular moment. And I know that you guys can relate to this. I know that y'all can relate that there's times when in the heat of the moment, things seem so much bigger, so much more intense than what they actually are. I can think back over my life and think about when's the last time I felt that way or the last few times that I felt that way. And it was never as intense or as big, or as real as what my emotions and my tired, exhausted self made it out to be. And so you helped kind of pull my feet back mm -hmm. down to the ground by, again, speaking life in that way and just reminding me, take a breath, don't make any big decisions today. You know, you're, you're, you're emotional and you need some rest. Mm -hmm. You know, I think part of speaking hope is speaking truth. And so uh, being able to say it's not as big as it seems right now, being able to come in and say something to the effect of, babe, there's two realities that are going on. And at any given moment in any one of our worlds, the truth is, is there's two realities. There's the reality of how it feels, right? And some of the real struggles that we're facing. And then the re other reality of all the good things that we carry in our life and on any given day that sometimes we take for granted. And so I know that we've both done this for one another, where we've said there's two realities. Which reality are you going to give your attention to? Mm -hmm. Are you going to give your attention to the drama, the disappointment, the heartache, the fear, or are you going to give your attention to the hope and the promise and the fact that we're not going anywhere? One of the things that Greg did so beautifully for me in this last season when my world was being shaken and, and the really the best that I could do is not to do anything, but just to look at him and say, I remember one time saying, if I didn't know who Jesus was and I didn't know how much I loved him and who I was, I'd be really scared right now because it seemed like everything in my world was being shaken. And so there was a reality that was extremely heightened um, emotions that I wasn't familiar with because usually I'm pretty even keeled and, and my emotions were not even keeled at this point. So all I could do is choose to not react or act out of those emotions. Right. And what Greg did so beautifully is he looked at me and said, babe, I'm not going anywhere. Which meant to me that that to me speaking hope was that I'm in this with you. We're going to make it through. And I think one of the most beautiful things that we can do to foster intimacy, again, inside the bedroom and outside the bedroom, is by saying something as simple as, I'm not going anywhere. I've got your back. We're going to make it through this. And peppering our language with truth that we've navigated hard seasons before, and we're going to navigate this one. And you're going to be okay. 
and you're going to be okay. And I remember you at one point looked at me and said, Julie, I, you're closer to a breakthrough. And on the other side of it, you're going to be so thankful for it. And I'm like, you're out of your mind. This is dark and I don't like any of this. But what you said actually came about to be true. But more than even those words, it was that the knowing that I am with you and I'm not going anywhere. Now, the tendent temptation is if we hit a crisis mode, to it, we watch where people turn on one another. Mm. And it's really easy to do if we're not careful. But with just a little intentionality, we speak the opposite and say things like, I'm not going anywhere. I've got your back. It's all going to be okay. Yeah, when, 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 when times are tough and you're navigating difficult seasons, you've got to remember that your battle buddies, not cellmates or enemies, you know, you have to focus because Satan would just have a heyday with you. You know, mm -hmm. he hates your guts because you're made in the image of God. And so he wants to do anything and everything that you can to tear this institution apart, because when he does, it affects not only you, it affects all of your community, your kids, all the people around you. And so even when you're at odds, you know, um, we, when, when we're at odds with one another, again, you've heard us say it, and I'm going to keep saying it because it's just so powerful. And that is that 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 we're not in unity. And any time that we're in disunity in any way, shape, form, or fashion, we're miss, missing out on God's 10x plan, you know, where one of us puts a thousand and the other and two of us puts 10,000, you know. So um, I, I like to be able to tap into God's 10x plan. And so I want to move on to the next point, but a couple of things just in addition to this on this one point here of, of speaking hope and, mm -hmm. and things of that nature, practice gratitude. Uh, in one of the darkest seasons that we faced, um, we were facing a lot of financial turmoil. There was just a lot of crazy things that were going on and the pressure was on. Um, one of the things that we did, and those of you who've been around a minute, you've heard us talk about this and you're like, oh God, he's going to talk about that again. But there's a lot of new people that haven't heard it yet. So just strap in. Here we go. Uh, we literally would look at things. We would open up the cabinets in the kitchen and we would look at the food and how the shelves were stocked. And we would and we would say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you that we are not going hungry. And, you know, I know that for each one of you, when you hear that, like like you get it on some level. Yeah, yeah. But you're not getting what I'm really saying. What I'm saying is, is like real gratitude and you stay with it and, and you repeat it over and over again until you really feel legitimately grateful for the fact that you've got a full cabinet you can do that with anything and everything that's in your home we do it for our health frequently lord thank you we know so many people that are not well that are struggling you know in their health and even if you're dealing with a health condition you know people that are dealing with one that's worse right and so I think, again, this idea of speaking life and speaking hope, gratitude goes hand in hand. And um, the Bible uh, tells us, God's word reminds us that what do we do for a spirit of heaviness? What do we do? You put, we put on, on the garment, garment of, of praise. praise, you know? Well, 101, yes, that may be singing a song if that's your jam, you know what I mean? I like to do that too. Praise and worship music is good. But also it is to put on the garment of praise It's to have a heart of gratitude and it's so interesting how this darkness and light cannot coincide together one displaces another so when we get serious about taking our minds captive to the cross right and really living from that in a practical way and practicing gratitude listen to me when you don't feel like doing it that's exactly when you need to do it we did it when, believe me, it was the last thing in the world that was on our mind. But as we did it, it allowed the spirit of God to reside more deeply in us and encourage our heart and pull us out of the vortex that was sucking us down and sucking the light out. <laughs> I remember out of us. one time, all right, I'm going to tell on myself, we're driving down the road. And remind, remember, I'm in a dark season and he's, he's practicing praise and I'm mad. <laughs> I'm mad that he's practicing praise. I remember this. And we're driving. He's like, Julie, what's one thing that you're thankful for? <laughs> and I'm looking and it's raining like crazy. <laughs> it's raining. <laughs> and I flippantly said, thank you, God, it's not raising, raining razor blades. <laughs> like, 
because I didn't have very much in me. So I'm like, thank you, God, it's not rain and razor blades. And then I busted up laughing. So we come back to that one every now and then. At least it's not rain and razor At blades. At least it's not rain and razor blades. So, <laughs> hey, you got to start where you're at, though. And the truth is, it's yeah. the genuineness. And we worked at it and we stayed into it until our hearts felt grateful. Yeah. It's not just saying, I'm a genie in a lamp, I'm a genie in a lamp, I'm a genie in a lamp. It, it, not, there's no truth in that. But yeah. when we say, God, thank you for the food in my cabinet. Thank you that we've got one another. Thank you that there's a roof over our head and we feel it in our heart. That praise together creates intimacy, which actually brings us to the second point, And that is to pray together daily. So if you're in a difficult season, Sometimes the hardest thing to do is to slow down and connect with one another and connect with God. But true gratitude and true expression of hope really doesn't come from anywhere else but that place. And so in that dark season, if you're facing a difficulty, man, we have learned the power of praying together, yes. praying together about our finances, praying together about the ministry praying together about our health, about our kids, about you, about you. Yeah. Truthfully, literally Being able to come together, though, and reminding one another in those moments when it feels like there's nothing that none of the promises of God are evident. Mm -hmm. Reminding ourselves and pausing and saying, OK, who is God? Do I trust him? What is his character and what do I really believe about his character and getting to that place again, much like gratitude. It's not just, oh, God, thank you that you're good. Your promises are new every morning and quoting a bunch of scriptures that don't mean anything in your heart. Pausing and reflecting on the goodness of God, of the times in your life where you didn't think he was going to show up and getting that adoration about remembering who he is, remembering what it is that he promised. And then holding fast and releasing the outcome and releasing the timelines that you think he should be answering your prayers to, but praying together in that way and reminding one another, here's what God said, here's what he's promised, and here's how we can trust him. Here's what I want you to know about praying together, okay? If you've been around for a minute, you know that we've already talked about, and if you haven't and you're new to this, then one, one way to divorce-proof your marriage is to pray out loud together over one another for one another and about other things that y'all are concerned about collectively okay like statistically legit i don't remember who did the survey but it was a very extensive survey with thousands of people and the gist of it was is that it was less than one percent of couples that pray together regularly uh that that end in the divorce you know, and so it's it's kind of evidence, you know, you can make a stat out of stat, a statistic out of anything, but I, I would like to think that there's some real mojo on that for real, you know, that God honors the fact and there is something very intimate about our prayer life and, and our prayer life together because there's nowhere to hide. And so what I want to tell you about this really quickly before we move on, because that wasn't the point, it's pray together, but just can't talk about praying together without at least mentioning that stat. It's 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 a reiteration of what Julie said, which what we have learned is that, and I want you to write this under the point, pray together, that's number two, okay, daily. Um, it is consistency. Um, the, the, the power of praying together in unity, listen to me, praying together in unity consistently about whatever it is that you need to be praying about or want to be praying about your relationship with one another. We've prayed, listen to this. We've prayed about our intimacy in the bedroom with one another together on a consistent basis. And God's helped us layer by layer to have breakthrough after breakthrough, you know, over a lifetime of pursuing one another and pursuing God's uh, um, best um, in, 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 inside in, the bedroom. In, yes. In, in, in every way, you know, and yep. always, we know that it starts outside the bedroom, but I think that, uh, uh, in, in some of the darkest seasons of our life, um, when we double down on this, uh, when there were challenges, maybe with the kids that seemed impossible, when there were challenges again, financially or in the schedule or whatever, as we went to the Lord on a consistent daily basis in unity together every day, I'm telling you, it moves mountains. If you're 
faith in prayer has been challenged. Um, and I think that, by the way, if you're a Christian for very long, you're going to have a season where it will be, you know, so don't feel like the Lone Ranger. We've all been there. Um, when we are consistent with it, I'm telling you, it moves mountains. So if you need a refresher course in that, just grab your spouse, figure out a time of day where y'all can really begin to go before the Lord and just air out your stuff with him and pray earnestly together towards the same end and watch and see what happens because he'll move on your behalf. I believe it in my heart. Yep. Seen it, seen it happen way too many times. We've seen so many impossible situations just vanish into thin air, you know, uh, uh, in his timing. So if it feels a little awkward to pray together. Uh, you can grab our devotional book, Married for a Purpose. There are little prayers that you can pray together. Stormy O'Marian's book, um, The Power of a Praying Husband, Power of a Praying Wife. Absolutely. Are powerful, powerful books. They are. They're timeless. Um, and for the other thing is, is it's not something big and lofty. It's yeah. something as simple as, hey, babe, how can I pray for you? How can I support you in prayer today? Or what what's heavy on your heart that I can be praying you for? And when Greg would share something like that, then it's just, God, would you help with that? And then afterwards, I always would say something or he would say something to the effect of, let me know how I can help you with that. And we would check in again at the end of the day and pray again. So those short little popcorn kind of prayers where it's just one liners uh, are really powerful. Yeah. The third thing then. I to, like it though when we go deep and oh, we, yeah, we, do. And we yeah. pray, you know, again, I'm not talking about necessarily like an accessory prayer. That would be awesome. But but I think just coming together and really they're typically for you and I, just so that, again, we make this clear. Um, we pray about the kids. We pray for the kids. We pray for one another and we speak life over one another in those prayers uh, and pray that God will help encourage one another throughout the day and lift one another up and surprise Julie with goodness. And don't let the devil, te devil tell her that she's fat and ugly or something <laughs> stupid like that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, it's, it's real stuff. <laughs> right. And so anywho, you can move on to the next point. All there. right. So number three. Um, so we've talked about making sure that you're praying together. Another part is replenishing together. Having fun. So the last thing that is at the top of the list when you feel like you're neck deep or nose deep or eyeball deep in, in the drudgery of life and you're being overwhelmed is to think about having fun together. But if you can stop and truly take that time, I can tell you that some of the most intimate times came when we just simply said, it doesn't matter how much we have to do today. It doesn't matter how many bills have to be paid today. It doesn't matter what drama is coming our way with the kids. You and I are going to connect. Uh, we are going to connect. And if that means because we have no money, we're going to go sit and just sit at the beach. If we're going to grab hands and go walk the block together, we are going to get away from the day-to-day -day routine that just reminds us of more of the junk that's in our life. We're going to get away from that so that we can connect, so that we can have fun, so that we can think of something other than the problem or the issue or the difficulty that surrounds our life. You've got to break the routine, the bottom line, is, especially when the pressure's on, especially when things are not going like the program read, you know what I mean? Break the flipping routine, get out of the normalcy. It can be, like Julie said, something just as simple as getting out of your house and taking a walk around, you know, wherever it is you live, okay? Um, there are lots of low-level, inexpensive things that you can do to have fun and, to, and, and, and connect. Um, sometimes we play silly games, you know? Um, I mean, literally, silly games. Uh, we have shared in the past, you know, that... Um, during a season where we were a little financially challenged, we went to the dollar store. Usually you try to scare me. That's what you do. Yeah, well, I think that's fun. <laughs> uh, I, and if I can catch it on film, it's even better. Because <laughs> then everybody else thinks it's fun, too, because they always yeah, like Yeah, I scream videos. and laugh. That's yeah. why I go, ah. But uh, we went to the dollar store one night, you know. And um, again, we were broke as a joke, but we literally went to Dollar General. And we just cruised around the store. And, you know, I, it, it, it comes... Excuse me, it comes back to a, a lesson that we taught not too long ago. 
which is a great thing that we all need reminded of from time to time. And that is a fun's attitude, not an activity. Somebody needs to write that down. You know, somebody needs to remember that today. Fun is an attitude, not an activity. You can have fun with just about anything. You can have fun shoveling crap. If that's what you decide that you're going to, I have done it by the way, and had fun legit. So you can make fun out of anything if you really want to, but What's important is that you're having fun together and that you recognize, especially in the, in the tense times, that it, it, that it is necessary, right? Mm -hmm. And so you may have to get creative, uh, especially if you're in tough financial times, but um, not all difficulties come from finances. They come from a lot of other ways too, but just remember to connect and have fun. Anything else on have fun specifically that you want to mention? I think it's really important to know what replenishes your soul. Yes, uh, what it is that speaks life to you in your spirit, body, mind, all of that. Uh, make a list of those kinds of things and add that activity to your daily routine, especially during difficult times. And as you do that, what, what's going to happen is there's a, a kindredness of spirit. Again, it's it's overcoming a difficulty together and then landing on the opposite side of it. There's an intimacy that's bred there that's unmistakable so on the on the final point on this i want you to write this down real quick it, those of you who are at a place where you can take notes if you don't write it in your phone you know if you get your phone handle handy put it in your notes or whatever write this uh, acronym pies p-i-e-s p-i-e-s pies um, this is not ours i wish i was that clever uh, the patterson center actually kind of coined this and uh, Julie and I were certified several years ago to do uh, individual life plans. And uh, one of the sections in there is the replenishment cycle. And they talk about PIES. And so what is that, you say? Well, P stands for physical. I stands for intellectual. So you got physical, intellectual, E. Emotional. Emotional. Thank you. And S is spiritual. So physical intellectual emotional and spiritual what are you cracking up about just because you never can remember the e i, just, I don't know why I that is man. i guess i <laughs> suck at emotions or something anyway uh so so the deal is is i want you to think i want you to think what it is that replenishes you in each one of those areas now there's probably some grandiose things but it's interesting when you break these down into those individual components that make up the whole of you, right? When you think about each one of those, if you're depleted physically, what do you need other than a nap and a good night's rest, right? What else replenishes you? Some women say, you know, a bubble bath. Uh, I've heard people say massages, you know, replenish them physically. Uh, some people say a walk in nature, you know, would replenish them physically. So whatever your jam is, think about specifically, though, what it is. Think about some things maybe that are bigger things that might require more time or more money or whatever and write those down. But then also think about some of the little things that you can do maybe in just a couple of minutes. You know, think about something you could do. How could you replenish in 10 minutes? If you had 10 minutes and you needed to replenish in any one of these areas, what might replenish you? And um, I think that that is a great thing to have documented. And that would be your homework assignment. Really go back and, and do this exercise. Think about what would replenish the two of you together in each one of those. And then think about yourself and specifically what would replenish you in each one of these areas as well. And I like being able to break those down into some of the simple things that are maybe five or 10 minutes because there's times that that's all I've got. But if I don't know what will replenish me in 10 minutes, I'm totally going to miss the opportunity and I'm probably going to scroll Facebook or something stupid like that, which I can assure you isn't going to replenish me or you. So we need to capitalize on, you know, uh, uh, on what it what it is that might replenish us in those areas, document it and then come back to the list, post it on your refrigerator, do whatever you need to do. Uh, but when it when you when you're about to blow your stack, kind of tap into. OK, first of all, the other thing is very quickly, and I'll wrap this up, uh, is is sometimes it's really useful for me to think and isolate what part of me is exhausted and needs replenishing the most is it physical is it intellectual is it emotional <laughs> is it spiritual 
right? Sometimes it might be more than one, and that's okay too. But most of the time, there'll be one particular area in particular. It's just like I am mentally flipping drained. I can't talk to another person right now. I just need some space to be able to get replenished myself. So I know what I need to do is call Grant and have him give me a pep talk. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> I might turn on a podcast. I might, you know, uh, uh, read a book or something like that. And even in a couple of minutes, sometimes it's a big, big win for me. All right. Number four, slow down and remove the distractions. Uh, Greg talked about Facebook. You know, it's it's crazy to me how often I go out into public and we've been trained as a society. We really have to be inundated. We're slaves. We're enslaved. Slave. We're enslaved to it. And there are some times where I literally will put my phone to the side. I get mad at myself because if I'm sitting here waiting for 30 minutes between a phone call or something, I immediately pick up my phone and start doing that. Doesn't replenish me. What if I would just put that thing aside and put on a praise song? Or what if I got up and actually walked outside or sat outside and looked at my beautiful backyard? What if I put on a praise song or entered into prayer? Those kinds of things are going to replenish me because I know that if I get quiet time, I'm a much better person. And so what are the distractions that you need to let go of? Maybe be a little disciplined and tyrannical to create a different habit that actually brings about replenishment versus just wasting time. So with all of that, it, it's coming to a place of um, removing the distractions and connecting together. Eyeball to eyeball, having a conversation, asking a question that you wouldn't normally ask. And if you need some conversation starters, by all means, please reach out to us. We have over 350 different conversation starters that we're happy to share with you that give you a place like, it's like, I don't know what to, to talk about because we're talking about the same old thing. Let's pull this thing out and just have a different kind of a conversation. And we'll go through that list still today. We do this and we'll go through. It's like, no, not that one. Oh, here's one. And we'll have a conversation around it. And what it does is it breaks up the monotony of conversation. So why are we sharing that? Because that helps you to create intimacy in a way that doing this doesn't. Make sense? So if you're in a difficult time, break up the monotony, put away the distractions, look by eyeball to eyeball and have a connection that you wouldn't have otherwise had. That will create intimacy both in the bedroom and outside the bedroom. I think the most important thing um, for, and this is a practice, whether we're in hard times, difficult times, difficult seasons or, or otherwise, you know, it's just simply being present. Uh, I think most of us, uh, when I say this, it will resonate that we are busy. And even when we're not busy, we're busy in our minds. Mm. You know, we're we're constantly slaying giants in our minds and thinking about the next thing that we need to get done. Or sometimes we just get in a habit of worrying about things or, you know, just simply being preoccupied and if there was something that I could give to the world right now, it would be the ability to be present in the moment right now with, with the people that they're with and or whatever it is that they're doing. Because uh, excellence, uh, connection, you know, all of these really fruitful things that really do matter in life uh, elude us when we are unable to be present in the moment doing and or being exactly where we are. And when it comes to connecting and being intimate with one another, uh, this is obviously inside and outside the bedroom, but um, specifically outside, you know, it's it's taking the time and, you know, we really try not to, if we're going to go to dinner, as an example, we try really hard to go someplace with, it just drives me crazy that a lot of these restaurants, we're in a, we're in a Japanese restaurant for crying out loud. They got TVs. And if you don't sit at the hibachi table where the dude's doing all this stuff, you know what I mean? Which sometimes that's cool. And sometimes it's not, you know what I mean? Uh, and you go into the other room and there's a flipping TV on the wall. I'm like, turn it off. I don't, cause, cause I'm going to watch it. And then not I'm gonna cause I want going, to, but oh. because it's, you know, over here and it's, you know, it's doing this. And I'm like, 
<laughs> you know? And I'm like, whoa, hello. You do it too. Oh, no, I never do that. Whatever. All right, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> All right, hey, number five. Be present. Be present. Number five, connect physically. Um, touch. Brush up against one another. Touch the face. Touch the hair. Like I like hold, to pinch your butt. You do. Hold hands, right? Those kinds of things that like will literally grab one. If you're walking, reach over and grab your spouse's hand for crying out loud. Get those touches going inside and outside the bedroom. I can tell you that there is so much more freedom that I carry today. And the reason why is because there was an intentionality to make sure we had connection in a physical, meaningful touch. And so slowing down and making sure that you foster even that euphoria again of flirting, the physical brush. We, we've had people that come to our home sometimes and they're literally sitting on opposite ends of the couch and we'll say, can you guys move in closer? And what's funny about that is as they move in closer and they begin to touch, they begin to smile. And so being able to, to foster that physical connection is really important. And the other thing, real quickly, <clears throat> there used to be a time where I would be uh, cooking and Greg would come up behind me and maybe give me a kiss right here on my neck and I'd push him away. And I remember when God began to, to challenge me that I was living limited in the area of sexual intimacy, that he wanted more for me. And I thought, okay, I'm not going to resist his touch inside or outside of the bedroom. I'm going to begin to lean into the connection and not resist it because sometimes it was just playfully, but I became, became, it was just the, the result. Like it was always the, the response that I would give was like, stop like that, just stop. And I remember I, I changed that and it was like, I leaned into it. I stopped cooking instead of pushing him away. Do you remember that? Oh, absolutely. No, it was, a, it was a significant change. And it was a change uh, I in think my heart. Just like probably literally within the last couple of months, I don't remember what was going on. I don't know if I had ticked you off or what the deal was, but I remember you had a day or two. Do you remember that? Yep. Where you kind of went back to it, yep. you know, and you yep. were like, you know, oh, quit Old it. Habits. Stop it, Greg. You know, and she would smile yeah, and me. laugh, <laughs> you know, but I, I, you know, I just, I, I, what, I, I, first of all, I wasn't offended by it. And I think that that's also an important thing you know, is don't be offendable. Nobody likes offendable people. You suck if you're offendable. Get over <laughs> it. I'm just saying, nobody likes to be around you if you're offendable. You know, nobody wants to have to walk on eggshells. I love you enough to tell you that, okay? So <laughs> anyway, um, I wasn't offended by it, um, but I did bring it up and I said, babe, are you okay? And I don't remember it now what the context of the conversation was or if there was in anything or whether you just had something else on your mind or you know what the deal was. But I know that we had a good conversation about it yeah. and that you were receptive and 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 reciprocated the conversation and it changed again immediately. It only was like more Sometimes I just get busy in my own mind and it's not anything or any one particular thing, but it is a habit that if I'm not careful... I'll push away when I actually should be leaning in. And so I, I really, I think that that last part of just being very intentional to connect physically, it's important to lay beside one another. And there are certain times where maybe there's something going on physically with a person's body that you can't be intimate, but you, as far as the actual sexual act, but you can be intimate through connection and touch, even if you can't fully do the full Physical well, response. I mean, <laughs> one of the things you've heard us say again, or maybe you've not, if you're new, is don't let what you can't do stop you from doing what you can, you know, and I think in uh, when it comes to all of these areas that we've talked about, and that is not to be leaving out sexual intimacy in the bedroom, particularly, you know, um, that is very much included in it. Don't let what you can't do keep you from what you can. And I think it's God's design. I think it's desire. Uh, for husbands and wives. And I think it's something that we have to defend. And I think that, again, this is an area where the enemy would love to have a heyday and try to get between us and distort it or cause us to not do this. But it is healing when we're able to do it and we're able to commune. 
Um, and, and, you know, obviously the hope is, is that you can find some unity prior to that. Um, but sometimes, you know, we've just had a hard day and we just need to come together, period. You know, we just need to come together sexually um, and and uh, relax. Uh, and the, at the end of the day, <laughs> it's free. <laughs> It'll cost nothing. So you can do it for free. <laughs> I'm an advocate Drag of that. Gorman. Drag Gorman. No, you know, in this... <laughs> Oh my word, Lord Just Jesus, saying. heal his mind. Scripturally, though, here's here's a, a I remember when David and they and Bathsheba came together after they lost their baby. Uh, that the sexual intimacy in and of itself was something that was healing and restorative. And so it is an area that if it's been a season that you haven't come together, begin to try to foster the flirt, foster the connection outside the bedroom. And then as much as possible, welcome it within the bedroom as well. <laughs> All right. That's our five ways to grow in intimacy during difficult times, to safeguard your marriage relationship inside and outside the bedroom. We'd love to have any thoughts, questions, comments that maybe you've either related to this subject matter or outside that this subject matter as well. We're opening it up to yep, you. Or any best practices. Or any you know, best practices. Got, yeah. um, a lot of y'all often share best practices, but we love your questions when you bring them to because everybody learns from your questions probably more than your best practices or our best practices for that matter. <laughs> Joy's doing this to Dave. Uh, it's like, no. Oh, that's, so that's good. good. Keeping it real. Are you touching them? Keeping it real. Yeah, she's keeping it intimate, <laughs> intimate touch. <laughs> I'm keeping his mind meld with Greg down. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, we've got a lot of new people. Please come back next week. We promise to be better behaved. Two weeks from now. Two weeks from now, yeah. I'm hey, going to talk about best practices, but I don't think this is the right channel. <laughs> It's a marriage call, man. It's all fair play, right? Oh, that's fun. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Mm. All right. So any questions, comments, thoughts? Oh, Grant and Steph. Oh, Grant and Steph, raise your hand. You're up. Where'd they go? There they there go. They, they keep hopping They're around on the screen. Um, one thing that uh, my mom used to always say is if you want something bad enough, you'll find a way. And if you don't, you'll find an excuse. Ooh. And what me and Stephanie has learned, there are lots of reasons not to be intimate. Intimate. There's no excuses. Wow. And uh, yeah. so that's that's yeah. for us. You know, it's it's just really important. And I can, you know, sometimes, you know, you have to reverse that, you know, it's not just being intimate outside the bedroom. So you can be inside. Sometimes you got to get intimate in the bedroom. So you feel like being intimate outside. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yep. And yeah. uh, we were just on a, we were just doing a podcast with a couple. And one of the statements was that, you know, sh when, when you, as a woman, when you feel like you're in a funk and you feel like things are like, I'm just kind of off right now. Um, when you begin to actually be intentional about saying, well, how's my bedroom been? Because more than likely, Outside of a physical condition, if the bedroom hasn't been pretty good and hot, then you're going to, over a period of time, get a little wonky. And so it's affecting everything else in your life. And um, a lot of women don't like to hear that because we don't always want to be the one that instigates that. But, you know, um, our man wants to be wanted. And so there's an intentionality about that, that we should want to want our man. And it's, uh, it starts in the mind. It's a mindset. And I think that that's definitely something that we've been really talking with a lot of couples about, you know, just open that dialogue. It's about conversation. If you're mm. frustrated in the bedroom, begin to have a conversation because maybe your expectation and your reality is not where it needs to be. And maybe it's just having a conversation about help me understand, or how can I serve you better in the bedroom? Not as a servant but because I love him and he's my mm -hmm. spouse, he's my mate. And when that is right, the rest of our world is right. Man, that is so good, Steph. You know, it's, it, I'm glad that you brought that up because I think there was a season of my life where I was so concentrated. Well, Greg just wants this. Greg just wants this. Greg just wants this. And I got to meet his needs and I've got to, you know, 
it was a chore or a to-do mm -hmm. as far as intimacy within the bedroom. And what I never allowed myself to feel was my own awakening of what God would want for me to want inside the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I began to say, God, what is it that you want from me that I have allowed the enemy to steal from? Uh, and for those of you that are new to the call, I grew up in a family where it was physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. So I had a lot of hangups in this area as far as ever wanting to want to. It was just an obligation right. to be quite candid. And it wasn't anything that was because of Greg. It was because of my past. And so because of that, I had to become very intentional. And all of a sudden, it was like, wait a minute. What do I want? What should I want? What would bring my heart what pleasure? Does what does God want for me in the bedroom? And it wasn't until I began to allow myself to even have a desire there that I had desire. Right. right. And so I, I love that because I want, of course, him to be satisfied and connected, but I also want to be satisfied and connected. And I want to have, have all that God intended for me. And so that is a, if you struggle in that area of intimacy, I would challenge you as the Lord challenged me. And that is where are you live and limited and what, what does he want for you as far as freedom in the bedroom? Because the truth was when I got honest with myself, I had things that I wanted and needed and there are times where I need to have that physical release with Greg in order to be in a better state of mind, quite honestly. Yeah. yeah and I've listened to Julie coach. I, I love that you brought this up, Stephanie, yeah, just the, yeah. the, Candor. the, well, and the, the, the so met so often we place this sexual desire on the guys, you know? Right. Uh, and I, I think that sometimes the gals just aren't maybe given permission or don't give themselves permission to put themselves in the same category. I found that honestly, Julie needs that connection. She needs it as much as I do. She may not be as aware of it, you know, until after the fact. Um, but but she she needs that that right. connection together uh, with us as as much as I do on any given week uh, or day. Um, and so um, I, I, I love how, though, I've heard you talk with with other women uh, ab about this in coaching calls and such, and really, again, challenging them. It's so easy for us to maybe discern what we feel like is uh, acceptable, what's normal or otherwise by comparing to what someone else, right. what someone else's limited thinking is getting them. You know, uh, I remember one couple that really struggled in this area as, as a specific example. And they were, you know, she kept telling him, well, you know, I talked such and such and such and such. And that, you know, they like maybe once a month at the most, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, great. That's something to shoot for. Let's go for that. Right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, for real, it's like, what, why, why do we, uh, uh, subject ourselves to what society says is normal particularly when we're talking about spouses that are probably not doing great and not particularly connected, you know? Uh, and so again, I think where you saw and we saw a lot of breakthrough was in taking it back to God and saying, okay, God, where are we live in limited and what do you have to say about this area? And I think that the Bible is even very clear that this is a, a time of celebration and communing together very intimately in every sense of the word and it's uh it's it's godly yep it's godly amen so thanks for bringing that up good stuff all right the parkmans you're up no just chiming in on that um you know i do think sometimes there's that good girl mindset and there's maybe some religious things to get in there and uh being able to just get to where we invited jesus into the bedroom start thanking him for the pleasure start thanking him for that connection <laughs> i had one of those mindset shifts when we had kids and i was just like really babe really does sex really make everything better and he's like yep yeah and i was like i just was stunned for i was like really and he's like mm -hmm. and i was like okay so you're telling me in 15 minutes i can have a whole new guy yeah he's like yep <laughs> and it was just like light bulb i can have a guy who wants to work with me in the kitchen and help me out with things <laughs> <laughs> be surprised what i'm willing to do <laughs> yeah. 
she's found the secret to life. <laughs> Also, you know, in the counseling world, I've learned that just even anatomically, that women's bodies are geared towards, you know, men, the wind blows and yep, let's go. But for women, you know, if we're not having it regularly, our bodies kind of shut down. It's almost like the old fashioned, you know, the guys go hunting or go to war and nope, don't need it, you know. Um, but if we're having it at least once a week, preferably twice a week, which that's a big ask being busy and stuff, but um, the body actually gets to where it's like, ooh, we women will get that desire going in us too. Like, where's my man? I need my man, you know. <laughs> Love it. Great Love stuff. It. Very good. good. Thanks for chiming in. Thanks for chiming in. All right. Any other on. thoughts or questions as we cruise through? Love this input tonight. It's good stuff. All right, with that then, let's just very quickly, if you're taking notes, I'm going to read off the five points for you to remember. Yeah, because somebody asked, I saw it popped up yeah. like in those teeny tiny words in the chat, which is way out there. I know, anyway. I need my glasses. Anyways, number one, make it a practice daily to express hope. Speak to life, not death. That's it. Number two, pray together daily. Three, don't forget to have fun and replenish. Your homework assignment around that is around the pies, physical, intellectual, emotional and spiritual replenishment. Number four, slow down, shut off the distractions and focus on one another, asking those questions, having some conversations that maybe you wouldn't normally have connecting eyeball to eyeball. Be and present, finally, shut the phone off. Don't put it on vibrate. Don't turn it over. Shut it the flip off. And then finally, number five, number five is to actually have physical touch. The holding of hands, the brushing up against one another, the flirting, and lean into the kisses. And sex. And sex. <laughs> he made me say it. There you go. All right, guys. Hey, we love you all. Thanks for joining us tonight. Happy Halloween. Eat lots of candy and connect with your spouse. All right. <laughs> we'll catch you next time. Love y'all. Have a good week.